what can you do when the public is accepting this content? You are not able to accuse me of plagiarism, which is your standard go-to trope, because I'm an IP lawyer by practice. Come after me and I'll rip you apart. On content, I'm saying I'm not claiming uh, expertise here. I am standing on the shoulders of giants. I am doing what any scientific publication would do, which is citation, 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 900 footnotes and endnotes. Deal with it. Part 3. Continuation of audiobook named India, that is Bharat by J. Sai Deepak. Section 1. Coloniality. Lesson number 2. The discovery of coloniality and the birth of decoloniality. At the turn of 20th century, after close to five centuries of European colonialism, thanks to the ebb and the flow of history and the natives' lights of colonized societies began asserting themselves. From seeking political autonomy as dominance within colonizing empires, they gradually progressed to demanding freedom as sovereign and independent nation-states that could write their own destinies just as colonizing nations could. The aspiring of the colonized to be sovereign nation on European lines has been attributed to European coloniality. Owing to close to two centuries of unbroken colonialism, scholars are of the view that coloniality was entrenched in colonized societies through the political legal infrastructure of European colonizers, as well as education system introduced by them, which shaped the thinking of native elites. In fact, the early introduction of colonial education systems in colonized societies and the replacement of indigenous epistemology and their structures ensured that coloniality informed their present, shaped their ideas for the future and critically colored the vision of the past. Depending on the inherent vitality and resilience of colonized cultures, the extent of internationalism of coloniality in the consciousness of dominated societies became truly evident when even their quest for political independence from the colonizer were based on the very framework introduced by him. Most colonized societies did not realize that their entire worldview had changed. For they could not see beyond political independence and aspired for freedom to govern themselves, albeit using the same values and institutions they had inherited from the European colonizers. In other words, owing the for coloniality, the vision of independent and most native elites was limited to the political economic sphere, it, namely decolonization, but did not include decolonization because they accepted the European worldview. On the all-important cultural front as well, therefore, all that the decolonized native elites sought by way of independence was the agency to be able to write their own futures but using the ideas, rules, tools and institutions of the rest colonizers which were designed for top-down impositions on a conquered and subjugated contemporary in order to civilize them. While coloniality is a fairly plausible explanation for the quest of a nation statehood of colonized societies, a more pragmatic way of looking at it could be that the global presence of European colonizing empires and therefore the global spread of colonial political economic ideas and institutions may have made it inconceivable and infeasible for colonized societies to revert the, the to dearly pre-colonial forms of political and social organization. They may have been genuinely offensive of being isolated in largely Europe-fenced and integrated world if they reverted to their pro-colonial political institutions. In today's telecom parlance, this can be compared with the situation of a noble mobile network operator who in the interest of entro 
interoperability must comply with the technological standards laid down by the European Telecommunication Standards Institute ETSI, failing which the former mobile phones users cannot interact with the users of other telecom operators that comply with the ETSI standards. Crudely speaking, similarly considerations would have been weighed on most colonized societies upon achieving political independence since the world's economy revolved around the West. Therefore, given the omnipresence of European political, economic and cultural coloniality, perhaps the only viable option available to the newly decolonized societies was to embrace the political structures, institutions and lexicon left behind by the colonizer to avoid the prospect of disintegration, annexation, anarchy and global isolation. However, broadly speaking, decolonized societies fell into two categories. In the first category, or whatever remained for it, those that had a strong sense of indigenous consciousness, or whatever remained of it after centuries of colonialism, such as India sought to compensate for continuing with European political legacy by infusing the edifice with ideas drawn from their cultures or by customizing European de definition to suit their cultural palette. In the second category, those societies that were hemmed by colonized native elites became crucible for a constant struggle between such elites and native masses that had been relegated to the status of subalterns and pushed to the margins to the process of nation building. In this category of societies, on the one hand, the colonized Europeanized native elites had stepped into the shoes of the colonizer to recast the native masses and the society of the European mold. On the other hand, the native masses were torn between the aspiration projected by the rulers to catch up with the West and the opportunity history had finally presented them with a reclaim their roots, consciousness and identity. It was in larger category of society that coloniality manifested itself in all its glory, especially in the spheres of political thought, environment, religion, language, law, gender, economics, production of knowledge, education and even popular culture. To add to the woes of decolonized societies while the era of decolonialism was over and its place was occupied by an even more worthy successor, Western imperialism, which inherited and expanded the legacy of coloniality. As scholars have pointed out, Western imperialism has proved to be much more effective derivative of colonialism since it extended the territorial reach and the depth of coloniality. Not only is the relationship of Western imperialism with other cultures in the same as that of colonialism, namely colonialism, colonizing of imagination of the dominated. It has also proved to be vastly more successful than colonialism in creating well-networked global power structures and totalizing sub-frameworks that have sustained and advanced the coloniality. This is a stark contrast to colonialism which was much more territorial. From the standpoint of preserving the continuity of coloniality, the Western normative framework has delivered all the benefits of colonialism and more, without having to assume the some degree of burden and responsibility as colonialism and with the added benefit of plausible deniability. While colonialism was more visible and direct because it required the subjugation of population, the subterranean nature of Western imperialism has ensured that the dominated society aspires to become part of a erstwhile colonizer's social fabric after decolonization. As a consequence, scholars agree that coloniality remains the most prevalent and powerful form of domination in the world. This could not have become possible without sufficient investment by the colonizers in the political, religious, knowledge and regal systems of colonized societies. 
which were carried forward by decolonized societies until the end of cold war in late 1980s that is when after close of four decades of decolonization there was not enough rigorous scholarship that made sense to the nature of colonial power and its continuing impact of the life and polity of decolonized nations the cold war had demonstrated that despite of decolonization nations the cold war has restwell colonies were caught in the crossfire between superpowers who sought to dominate the world even those who claimed to be non aligned could not remain uninfluenced by the cold war and its dynamics it was during this period in the late 1980s in peruvian socialist enable cohesion presented the concept of coloniality of power specifically the very font of colonialism in other words colonization is the process colonialism is the policy and coloniality is the mindset or the thought that underpins or drives colonialism coloniality according to cuisino is the totalizing thought behind colonialism which monopolizes time space and subjectivity and makes all of them the exclusive preserve of european colonizers and other scholar such as the european colonizers quizeno such as selvia venter walter de mignolo catherine e vlash nelson maldonado toros and roman grossfogel have contributed the scholarship of pathology of coloniality its universalist claims and its all pers- pervasive character not only did they analyze the problem they also offered an option alternative namely decoloniality which moved away from the model presented by the postmodern and postcolonial schools the decoloniality has been described as the most movement for reclamation and restoring for the indigeneity and its subjectivities in hindsight it could be said that the existence of omnipresent coloniality and the constantly shrinking space for indigeneity meant that at some point indigeneity would resist and talk back to coloniality and seek to reclaim its unconscious and space however since it took several decades after decolonization for the natives to find their voice and speak the language of decoloniality it is important to understand the true nature of decoloniality its motivations and the pinnings invisible at ever present devices and its impact on the entirety of indigenous world views not only world this help us understand the why of decoloniality it would also help us make sense of the how rather a plurality of them on this front Vezino's work represents the early pioneering years of scholarship of coloniality when its primary focus was the colonial character of european power vezino was of the view that race was central to the european coloniality and that there was an inextricable link between european western coloniality and modernity and rationalism he consciously used the europe and the west interchangeably woving to the european foundations of the western world view and civilization his diagnosis was that the race conscious and introduction to the cultural complex of modernity slash rationality were the twin pillars of european coloniality or simple coloniality these observations and propositions were based on his critical examinations of the impact on european colonialism and coloniality on the societies and cultures of what is known as american latin american today he identified that the relationship between european colonizers and the colonized societies of latin america was one of the direct politics social and cultural domination which he called he called eurocentered colonialisms the european colonizers consciously believed in the biological and structural superiority of his race which in the mind of the colonizers distinguished him from the colonized this belief 
which was the premise of the colonial power structure and the figment of colonizers self important world view was the legitimized as being objective or scientific or rational and therefore natural this evidences the use of scientism by the colonizers of perpetuate nonalism and legitimize stereotypes about the colonized in order to justify discrimination in fact the scientific racial consciousness of col colonizers led to race based stratification of colonized populations across the world and created specific forms of discriminations which remained those societies long after decolonization as part of large aim of stratification of the colonized society the colonizer subtly co-opted dominant groups or the elite form of decolonized society into the colonial power structure to gradually wean them away from the rest of their people this was done by inventing pseudo scientific racial theories to create fissures in the social structures of the native societies while simultaneously teaching them the ways of european cultures Vizinos seminal contribution was his acute observation that the dominant elites of colonized native societies were acculturated not just into the colonial power structure but also the european world view through the introduction of the cultural complex namely european modernity slash rationality that is imputing europeanness to anything that is new or novel or contemporary or relevant or rational modernity and rationality as introduced by and employed by the Rus european colonizer therefore represented and still represent the weaponization of time and appropriation of very idea of reason by the european colonizer and his successor the western imperialist who negate and deny the histories and real lived experiences of entire civilizations from the moment of their arrival this gave birth to the process of cultural colonization and the phenomenon or state of mind known as cultural coloniality in a nutshell coloniality refers to a meta phenomenon that affects the mental constitution of the colonized society and reorients its entire world view to bring it in line with the colonizers by distorting stereotyping eliminating or acculturating the indigenous world view the effect of the introduction of modernity rationality complex into the culture of colonized societies was that the entirely of native world views especially their ontologically theological and epistemological systems were otherized that is the indigenous world view became the other to the modern and rational mainstream and had to prove itself on the judgmental and wills to the latter the native world view could never succeed at providing its modern relevance because the coloniality modernity rationality complex was designed either to exclude indigenous perspectives or acculturate it in case it happened to be the value without crediting the indigenous perspective according to the quagino this is where the true genius of the european colonizer lay not in the brutal economic and political repression of the native but in successful projecting his away of life aspirational idea blanket conception of this idea by dominant native elites preserves it so the dominating power structure as well as the world view of the colonizer only served to deepen the flat line if a flat line did not exist hetero it was concisely created if in either case the fault lines remained even after decolonization as the legacy of colonialism that said the colonialism was not content with the co option of only dominant elites among the natives but also interested in converting the nation native society to his way of life to his 
to this end Quisino pointed out that while the colonizers saw the colonized society as an economic resource to fed on he also indulged in the systematic extensive repression to indigenous ideas it was so deteriorating that they this deprived the colonized society so its ability to respond culturally even if it did not have the where wherewithal to resist politically or militarily since most native elites that were at the helm of the centers of culture and production of knowledge had surrendered their agency over the indigenous worldview the masses too gradually followed suit the cumulative effect was the deep embedding to coloniality in the consciousness of the colonized society so much so that that it was started believing that it had been defeated because of its cultural moorings to the colonized and now colonized native it seemed that the only way to regain dignity was by adopting european cultural and thought processes which concluded which included the european way of achieving economic prosperity that is by exploiting nature this disruption of the critical relationship between indigenous society and nature came to affect the entire world apart from disastrous impact on nature the universalism of european culture made it the benchmark against which all the other cultures had to judge their self worth in the process the modernity rationalism culture was entrenched in the colonized society and reinforced reinforced in the colonizing society as well the direct intended consequence of coloniality and the introduction of modernity rationalism complex was the creation of supposedly universal standards for moral ethics religions languages knowledge scientific temper political organization nationhood individual rights and more in short cultural and civilization this complex did not die with the decolonization but remains alive and kicking even today just as coloniality is after all as scholars have identified coloniality goes hand in hand with modernity rationality and vice versa as long as coloniality is alive despite its outward proclamation of open mindedness dialogue and diversity the colonial dna of modernity and rationality will continue to actively resist and out oust indigeneity it will staunchly refuse to record accord indigeneity the respect of an equal and will continue to use time and reason as a weapons of question to a very relevance of indigenous point of view because the underlying of the indigenous point of view premises indigeneity is rationally inferior has not changed the successful universalism of modernity and rationalism complex is further evidenced by the fact that neither word is prefaced by european anymore despite the entire edicase was being eurocentric interesting in her paper titled early modernity the history of a word patriarchy said who specialized in early modern and colonial european eras traced the europe origins of the word modern to the 6th century ca when it was first used in northern italy this was when roman empire still existed but northern italy was conquered by the ruled by germanica ostolo ostogos according to sid the word modern made it debut in the context of art Art architecture when the ostrogothic ruler of northern italy encouraged wealthy roman families to undertake reconstruction of public building at their private expenses the outcome was the new building had a different architectural style that distinguished them from those built under roman imperial rule praising the contribution of one particularly family for its reconstruction of the theater of pompey the scribe of osto gothic ruler called the families a careful imitator of antiquity the nobelist founder of the modern works translation in the in this context according to sid the modern world simply 
the modern word simply meant different without any value being imputed to it neither positive nor negative subsequently for a brief period the word doubled as a synonym for new thereby bringing in the element of time in other words the word modern was not only a reference to the time that something belonged to it was also importantly a reference to the period it did not belong to seed revealed that around the early 14th century modern was significantly used in dante's the divine comedy wherein it was a synonym for contemporary it was used to compare the present with the past with the present faring poorly making the use of modern a veiled criticism of the present according to seed it was only almost a century later around the 1430s that modern was used in southern romance languages to show the past in poor light and congratulate the present as for english scottish poet william dunbar is credited for using the first in his poem wherein modern was used to portray the present in a positive light while remaining uh, tight lipped about the past the adversarial pitting of the past and the present with the balance tilting in favor of the latter occurred in english in the 16th century when modern meant someone who takes part in the test and cares of his age and is oppositely to all convert conservatism in a nutshell positive connotations such as open mindedness newness and relevance were imputed to modern and negative stereotypes such as parochiality outdatedness and rigidity were associated with conservative and traditional that this imputation coincided with the period around which european powers had established the colonies across the globe was not coincidence this is evidenced by the established nexus between coloniality and modernity both of which are underprivileged undergreached by notations of anthropology superiority as articulated by quizino quizano identified that the process of classification of the world on a racial lines by the european colonist led to subhumanism and dehumanism of several communities depending on their perceived worth in the eyes of the colonizers the ramification of such a classification included geographical identities acquiring racial connotations specific skin tones being associated with the respective races of the colonizer and the colonized and the creation of a new structure of division of labors and resources each of these stands ultimately contributed to the creation of self serfdom and slavery notion of master or superior and slave inferior races and notions of the man manifest destiny of some to rule over others and the fate of others to be perpetually ruled lines were drawn between the west and the east the civilized and the primitive the scientific and superstitious the rational and irrational modern and traditional historical and mythological essentially european and non european even where the colonizer slash the bracket occidents begrudgingly admitted that there was indeed culture and civilization outside the europe he resorted to stereotyping and exotification by calling it the orient this racial classifications of the entirety of humanity to sub serve colonial interest forms the foundation of the eurocentric world order in fact quizino highlighted the relationship between european colonialism and globalization that resulted in western hegemony over all for globalization that human experience critically this included control over all forms of subjectivity culture and production of knowledge quizino did not means words in calling the phenomena of globalization the culmination of a process that began with the constitution of america and colonial slash modern eurocentric centered capitalism as a new global power race and therefore coloniality remain as relevant today as they were in the colonial era notwithstanding globalizations professed love for the concept of global village 
simply put globalization contrary to population popular perception is not a friend of diversity nor is it a melting pot of cultures on the contrary it denotes the gradual and unconscious eradication of heterogeneity more particularly the diversity of indigeneity and is proof of the existence of common denominators of culture and civilization for the entire world which are distinctly western normative in character quizino also argued that any attempts to obfuscate history by taking the position that modernity was not europe but was merely a reference to newness of ideas would be tantamount to turning a blind eye to the colonialism of the last five centuries which led lent specific meanings of modernity and rationality that are distinctly european in nature in other words the totalizing effect of european colonization since the age of discovery has given the word modernity a distinct historical connotations that is impossible to ignore given the continuing presence of coloniality critically vizino acknowledged that while colonization colonialism may have existed in different parts of the world in different forms prior to european colonization none of them compared to european colonialism's visions of global domination this is because european coloniality required the entire world to share a common perspective on the entirety of human history and experience it is precisely for this reason that it is impossible to limit the impact of european colonialism to any one particularly facet of life the intended global goal of european colonialism and the outcome was global cultural hegemony which includes a subject that has become a sensitive one to broach due to deeply ingrained unconscious coloniality the religious origins and impact of european colonialism on indigenous onto epistemological structure and processes simply put the spirituality and faith given the catch all use of culture in the literature on coloniality there is a tendency to assume that colonialism was driven only by race economics and hunger for power fortunately and refreshingly despite the extensive focus on race due to legacy of critical theory of race there exists literature that discusses the religious motivation that squared race based colonialism and its impact on indigenous onto epistemological system this facets on colonialism is specially relevant to the structure decolonized societies that have not been fully converted to the european colonizers faith and therefore continue to face and resist coloniality expansionist advance even today in his work on race and coloniality quizino did not touch upon sorry quizino did touch upon the ways in which colonized societies were forced to learn and adopt the culture of colonizer so as to aid the process of colonization which included learning both the material and metaphysical specifically judo christian religious traditions that said in my view the christian character of christopher columbus expansionist voyage of discovery was dealt with more explicitly by jamaican writer and cultural theorist silvia winter walter de mignolo argentina semiotician and professor at duke university north carolina nelson maldonado Torres a professor on latino and caribbean studies and others who have contributed to the understanding of direct role of the christian religion in european colonization and its effect on the race co- uh, consciousness of the colonizer venter drew attention on the reconceptualism of geography and the very meaning of humanity triggered by the age of discovery she argued that since age of discovery altered conception of time space and subjectivity it also altered notions of empathy for other since humans have always used time space and subjectivity to make sense to themselves and their surroundings this meant that the age of discovery also led to new conceptions of life and death and legal agency over them in a nutshell 
European coloniality modernity affected not just ontology, theology, epistemology, and anthropology, it also birthed new notions of ethics and therefore affected education and defined both politics and policy. Winter was also forthright in her view that the age of discovery, evangelization, and colonization went hand in hand and credited that period with secularism of the key elements of Christian epistom which meant that was what was valid within a, the Christian worldview was deemed good for the entire world and those that did not conform had to convert or perish. Her views are certainly supported by the fact that papal bull called Unter Ketara was issued by Pope Alexander VI in 1493 which authorized Spain and Portugal to colonize convert and enslave non-Christians. Following are the content of bull which make for an eye-opening read. Alexander, Bishop, Servant of Servants of God. To the illustrious sovereigns, our view dear son in Christ, Ferdinand, King, and our very dear daughter in Christ, Isabella, Queen of Castile, Leon, Aragon, Sicily, Granada, health and apostolic benediction among other works well pleasing to the divine majesty and cherished of our heart this assuredly ranks highest that in our time specially the catholic faith and the christian religion be exalted and be everywhere increased and spread that the health of souls be cared for and that barbarous nations be overthrown and brought to the faith itself Wherefore, in as much as by the favor of divine clemency, we though of insufficient merits have been called to this holy see of Peter, recognition, recognizing that as true Catholic king, prince, we have indeed learned that you, who for long time had intended to seek out and discover certain islands and mainlands remote and unknown and not hated to discovered by others to the end that you might bring the worship of a redeemer and the profession of the catholic faith their resident and inhabitants having been up to the present time greatly engaged in the siege and recovery of the kingdom itself of Granand, we are unable to accomplish this holy and trustworthy purpose. And in order that you may enter upon so great an uh, undertaking with great, greater readiness and hurt, hurtiness endowed with the benefit of our apostolic favor, we of our own accord not and not at our, your in, instance nor the request of anyone else in your regard but of our own soul rises and certain knowledge and out of the fullness of our apostolic power by the authority of almighty god conferred upon as the blessed peter and the almighty god worship jesus christ with this proviso, however, the known of the islands and mainlands found and to be found, discovered and to be discovered beyond that side, line towards the west and south, be in the actual pro position of a Christian, any Christian king or prince up to the birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ, just passed from which the present year 1493 begins. The Christian command to convert non-Christians could not have been more explicit. Importantly, the reference to India in the bull was of direct consequence on to the European colonization of Bharat, as we shall see later in Chapter 8. While the bull was issued for, for after Columbus' expedition of 1492, as evident from the bull, Christian injections and degraded uh, both the expedition and subsequent voyages to the new world. According to Venter, the treatment of Pagan polytheistic peoples as adiator, adulator by Columbus was traceable to the Judeo-Christian perception of the world's population being divided into Christians, 
who had heard and accepted the new world of the gospel number 2 infidels like muslims and jews who although they were monotheist had refused the word and 3 those pagan polytheistic people who had either ignored or had not been preached the world venter was of the view that the religious term idolater informed the meaning of the secular terms such as indios or indians which led to the religion induced racial othering of non christian idol worshiping communities encountered by columbus the encounter of christian european colonizers not non christian idol worshiping societies in turn led to the justification of liberal li- liberation and civilization being offered for the colonization of uh, uh, religiously and hence racial inferior people so this ultimately paved the way for institutionalized slavery and an economy based on it mignolo to echoed these thoughts in his paper titled racism as we sense it today in which he charted the christian oet driven origins of the european colonizers obsession with race ethnicity building on the works of quizino and venter nelson maldonado toros suggested that the religion as an anthropology category and race as an organizing organizing principle of the human identification and social organization were the products of european colonialism which only expanded with the growth of nation western modernity according to him both religion and race were con- constituted together and became two of the most central categories that altered global history at every level therefore the critical theory of religion was highly relevant to understanding the critical theory of race and both were relevant to understanding the evolution of ethics in sense any uh, understanding of coloniality modernity was incomplete without applying the twin lenses of religion and race and the only way to present at alternative foundation for ethics was to adopt a decolonial approach given the near complete hegemony of coloniality modernity on contemporary ideas of ethics according to teros the age of discovery necessitated the broadening of the understanding of european conceptions of religion when the christian european colonizer came to into contact with non christian indigenous society of a new world citing the work of a guy strosma an israel scholar religious studies toros book took the view of age of the discovery prompted a new approach to religion in view of christianity's encounter with amerind amerindians this is what makes the age of discovery relevant for understanding the emergence of modern categories of religion and race according to him this was a major epistemic revolution in its own right he also felt that the link between race and religion was better understood by taking account to christianity theological conceptions of judaism given its attempt to so itself from its jewish racial roots as well as its perception of islam for a, for a more pers- comprehensive understanding of race and religious interplay he suggested the inclusion of perceptions of blackness namely the perceived link between a race color and the existence of a soul and indigeneity as well on the issue of broadening of conceptions of religion upon christianity encounter with indigenous society torres interpretation of columbus encounter with the native peoples of americas differed from winters he was of the view that since christianity recognized only three categories christian infidel idolaters columbus initially struggled to place the natives of americas in any of the three and therefore assumed that they were not people from a wrong or false religion but were simply without religion the absence of religion was perceived as the absence of a soil in christian thought with the soul being a condition precedented for a human to establish a connection with the divine this divide between those with a soul and without according to torres led to race consciousness in the european colonizer because the colonizer saw 
the colored native people as non-souls. This converted religion into an anthropological category because it had become a make marker of race. That the European col Christian colonizer was white and the native people were black or of color was not lost on the former. The white Christian became the one with the soul and therefore their human therefore fully human while the black native was without a soul and therefore not fully human and simply non-human owing to the crucible of religion race color and the soulness own christian uh, black natives were subjugated to religion induced a dehumanization which justified it and facilitated their treatment as slaves or at the every very least, as those upon whom the light of Christianity, Europeanness, civilization had to be shown. Entire continents and societies were associated with soulliness, requiring either enslavement or conversion. Since adopting Christianity was believed to infuse a soul into the dark soulless native. In other words, in the eyes of the Christian European colonizer, he was not merely saving the soul of a non-Christian infidel or idolater, but was breathing soul into a certain worshipping subhuman and animal through his Christianizing and civilizing European touch. If this healing touch was resisted, the subhuman had to be put down ruthlessly like a beast. What is important to note is that whether approached from the perspective of Venter, where natives were seen as idolater by Columbus or from the point of view of Toros, that Columbus considered them soulless, both views emanated from Christian. OET as it existed then and shared a common purpose native non-christian communities had to convert or die initially native americans were welcoming to europeans as evidenced by alteration of creation lore to accommodate the existence of the white men however as contact and trade increased between two groups the native gradually saw his land being lost to the european to cover the debts incurred in the course of trade and as the colonizers' greed for native land increased, the conversion of Christianity did too. At very least, serious efforts were invested by Christian European missionaries to map local traditions and deities onto Christianity to reconcile the two and gradually ease the native into the colonizers' religion. Conversion to Christianity was also projected to the native as a way of gaining social respectability, acceptance into the circles of the colonizer, and access to the European education being offered by missionaries. This meant that Christianity satisfied the practical needs of the native's people, needs which were created by colonizer instead of fulfilling their spiritual needs. In her paper, the impact of colonial contact of, on the cultural heritage of Native American Indian people, Nasima Dalal suggested that evangelical attempts to convert indigenous populations had more than one objective. The first was, of course, to spread the word of the gospel and the second was to acquire the land of indigenous populations. Some would say it was the other way around and that religion was used as a mean to the end. The end being the integration of native peoples into European culture and complete elimination of the native culture. This was achieved through several means, one of which was to massacre vast numbers of community and to ensure that the vast uh, the rest of community fell in line. They were forced onto reservations with minimal resources. In some cases, diseases such as smallpox and the plague were introduced with the knowledge that the indigenous community was not immune to them. There are recorded instances of voluntary conversion by indigenous people when the threat of confrontation with the colonizer loomed large. The hope was that such conversions to Christianity would prevent violence and start a dialogue between the communities. Clearly, such conversion was seen as the only alternative to inhalation.
नॉटविथस्टैंडिंग सच अटेम्प्ट टू मेक पीस विथ सिविलाइज क्रिश्चन कॉलोनाइजर लिटरेचर टेल्स दैट जस्ट अबाउट टेन परसेंट ऑफ द नेटिव पॉपुलेशन सर्वाइवड यूरोपियन डिसीजेस मैस्कर्स डिसप्लेसमेंट एंड असिमिलेशन विच वाइप्ड आउट मोस्ट ऑफ इट्स बैरियर बैरियर्स ऑफ ट्रेडिशंस एंड नॉलेज इट कंटेम्पररी डिस्कोर्स इट इज समटाइम्स अग्यूड दैट द लिटल दैट सर्वाइव्स ऑफ इंडिजीनियस ट्रेडिशन इज प्रूफ टू द कॉलोनाइजर्स एकोमोडेटिव नेचर वेन ऑन द कॉन्ट्ररी इट इज द प्रूफ ऑफ द डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ द community to keep its identity alive the europeanism and christianityism of native populations was accelerated and cemented by the fact that the colonizer actively welded both the stick and character a once thriving and vibrant society with its own centers of production of culture and knowledge was physically and culturally ex exterminated and reduced to a colonized human mass of illiterate peasants thereby creating the infamous white man's burden peasants thereby creating its on the other hand the yawning void so created was filled by offering european culture as the way to climb the social ladder in other words the demand for european culture was created and met by the european colonizer not just for the present but for all time to come this is the european colonizer passed off as his benevolence for he was saving the heathen natives soul from the latter's own ignorance superstitious and savagery had it not been the, for archaeological and ethnological studies it would have been next to impossible to construct, reconstruct native life as it existed in pre colonial times or the genocides perpetrated by the colonizer but for this evidence european coloniality would have successfully justified and explained explained the civilization civilizing effect of colonization and convinced us all that its culture religion and way of life were globalized through peaceful means this explains the present christian characters of the americas and large part of africa which could we should come as no surprise given the complete culture domination colonized societies in latin america were subjected to by the european colonizer it was only human on the part of the dominated to latch on to the closest living culture including religion available to them namely that of the colonizer which they wore as the patch of honor with the zeal of a new convert the adoption of the colonizer's culture was clearly not the matter of choice but a sheer human reaction and perhaps even a necessity thanks to the atrocious and inhuman conditions created by the colonizer it was only a matter of time before the new convert of european culture and religion not only disowned his previous identity but also spewed venom against it because he associated his past and heritage with weakness superstition and defeatism thus completing the process of sovereign ties with his roots to use a pop culture reference coloniality was a form of inception performed on the minds of the colonized so that colonialism and colonization were no more external to their consciousness but became internal to it importantly be it the americas or africas or asia the replacement on or dilution of indigenous faith system by the european colonizers religion had an adverse bearings on the scared relationship between indigenous societies and their land and consequently with nature this in turn severely affected indigenous onto epistemology and culture as shall we see in the next chapter the next chapter is going to be the coloniality indigenous faith and nature so stay